Okay, we are back here. I'm going to pass those controls back to you, Raven. Uh, I've got it set up. Um, and uh, we are just, we grabbed a snack on our break. Sometimes we have a problem uh, getting supper in uh, before our thing. So we're all munching on pogo dogs. <laughs> That's right. Amanda made pogo dogs, Josephine, in our, in our game. And um, I'm going to tell you a pogo dog story. These are from scratch. These are scratch. Pogo no, dogs. I don't think these are they scratch. Sure these are not. Are... They came from the freezer. And these are the official <laughs> Pogo brand Pogo dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, I have two kids, mm -hmm. and they are now in their mid thirties, uh, off living their lives. But when they were little, my son's a little younger than my daughter. When he was four years old, he had a huge argument one night with his mom. She wanted him to go to bed or something like that. I forget what the issue was. But she walked out of the room and he just sat there stewing and festering and he was so mad. And as she left, he called after her and he didn't know any good swear words because, you know, he's four years old. He doesn't have... So as she is leaving the room, he goes, you, you... Pogo dog. And that was the ultimate <laughs> ultimate curse of a four year old that that his mother was a pogo dog. <laughs> and we've never let him forget it. So now sometimes when I curse at things I call them a pogo dog. All right. We're back to the game. You have just had a giant undead creature wander through this burned forest and confront you and it is a really big uh nasty looking mammoth i've got it on the back screen you can put it back on the adventure screen for a sec if you want so there you go that's what you guys have uh got to deal with uh, i'm going to actually i'll put it back up like that there i fixed it uh, and uh, what do you want to do? You can take it off adventure we, we screen We rolled now. for initiative. You rolled for initiative? Okay, I will take those initiatives now. You'll know what they are. Sorry, I, I forgot. Lavinia is the first to react upon the with her keen cleric neurotic death cleric senses. She uh, reacts to this giant mammoth that is uh, stomping towards you. But I'm going to... Um move up close enough to be able to if you move then those missiles okay. it's less missiles all right so give me one second here then do the missiles go whip? yeah they'll they go have, around they corners go, they have to go straight yeah, the awesome thing about magic missiles is they'll even go right around corners as long oh, as you've got right. line so, of sight so wherever she's from it doesn't matter yep. okay, they're, it's they're like go. guided missiles you can fire them off sideways then i'm casting three <clears throat> magic <clears throat> missiles toward this lovely critter do you want to uh magic missile is a is it a level one spell I'm looking. it is level one do you want to upcast it yep give me a level two spell slot then or if you want to blow a level three spell slot you could hit him with nine missiles 2021 21 good stuff mm -hmm. thank you very much Okay, and as the magic missiles uh, hit him, you hear this. It's almost like he, this thing still thinks it's alive and it's trying to crump it with its horn, but because there are so many holes in it, you kind of get the sound coming out of it. Very weird trumpety sound. It then becomes, it's going to be, here's a, your order. Raven, Josephine, Percy, then the mammoth, and then Thaddeus. So I'm next? Yes. Then you, Josephine, then you, Percy. So think about what you want to do. Jeez. All right. Well, I'm going to... Hmm. So I can upcast a level two with a level three slot, yep. correct? I am ruling that in our game, you can do that all the time. I'm not going to play stupid old rules where you can't upcast or you've got to have the specific number of 
spells in specific slots to cast them. I don't care. Put them on your list, and then you can use the same spell five times if you want to, if you got the slots for it. Okay, and I'm how far away am I? How far away are you? You tell me. You are here. I, I can't see a grid. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 25. Approximately 25. 25. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to cast um, an upcast uh, level 2, level 3, um, which means I'm going to cast a summon animal. Here's my level 3 spell, which means I can summon a level 2 creature. I am going to give you a grid. You have your now, hat. how big is the grid now? Oh, maybe it hasn't shown up yet. No. Did it show up? No, it's not in the grid oh, yeah. yet. There it is. Oh, there is, is it visible? Can you guys see it yeah, okay? I can see it now. Yeah. It's pretty, Five, pretty 10, light. 15, 20, 25. Yep. Okay, and I'm going to summon um, a slurk. A slurk? A slurk. Really? You're summoning uh, a slurk? I wonder slurk. what the hell a slurk is. Okay, there. It should be much more visible as a grid now. It's as good as I can make it anyways. What the hell is a slurk? Well, I don't want to know. A slurk is a, um, is an, is a very strange-looking animal. I'm trying to find you. It's a, it's a tusk, long, uh, frog-like beast found That's in the... underground lairs and caves. It has two massive tusks, which it can use to gore prey and tangle with rival slurks. Its natural ability to climb walls and cling effortlessly, effortlessly to ceilings. And it basically, um, you know, hangs out in caves. But this particular thing, it's got uh, two very different types of foul-smelling secretors uh, from their <laughs> pale white skin. Large How pustules. many foul-smelling secretors do I have? I, I can't. I've lost count. Well, yeah, probably more detail than we need. But um, Thank you. large pustules sure. on the slurk's back <clears throat> uh, drip with a sticky oh resin-like slime, oh, and they yeah. harden with exposure to air. It's like beer and Harkonnen. So I'll cut to the chase, but basically <laughs> I can do an entangling slime attack where a creature stuck by a slurk slime squirts becomes clumsy one. It takes a five-foot foot penalty to speed for one hour or until the slime is removed. It can be removed with a total of three interactions to an entangled creature. But I wonder if that would work on a big creature like this. Squirt away. See what happens. Why not, eh? Do it. I have away. found the slurk in the bestiary. I mean, just a, a, the old default one. I'm going to drop it onto the map for you. Someplace. There is Is that where you want him? Is he, you yeah, want I the want slurk beside that right thing? between us, actually. So he's To make Lavinia the happy, I will now utter the immortal lines. The slurk today will be played by <laughs> the Velociraptor. All right. <laughs> There it is. Hey, be your best slurk. Slurk of the day. Okay. That thing sounds disgusting. It sure does. Oh, gross. Good job. It, one of the actions that it's got is called belly grease. Oh, ick. <laughs> is that great? <laughs> yeah, really? Belly grease? Belly grease. Yeah. This, I, this slurk sounds so uh, pleasant. Now, I'm going to have to go make some... Billy Bob now, right? Because it's belly grease and Billy I'm Bob. I'm going to have to make some artwork. slurk artwork for your slurk so that we have something to look at. Why not, eh? Well, I've never had a slurk, so today okay. is today. You have conjured your slurk, and can it attack right away? Well, it's using entangling slime, so it's um, shooting out entangled slime around itself. Okay, as it shoots out, it's entangling slime, and I see the thing. Do, do, becomes clumsy. It takes a five-foot penalty to speed for one hour until it is removed. I'm going to roll to see if it could even affect. I have a lot of D4s all of a sudden to put away. You know, can you give these to Lavinia, keep them near you, her if she's going to cast those magic missiles. That's yeah. the biggest use you of those. Handy. I need a we cup. Have an extra cup. Oh, how about you got it? There's an extra cup over here, too. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to see if the slurk affects saying, the mammoth. And the mammoth rolls a 19 to shrug off the effects Ooh, of the slurk. No. The slurk is, the mammoth is not slowed by the slurk. Mm. Uh, but he's all slimy now on his already undead, decaying body. It's yeah. just on his two front legs. All this gross, disgusting slime. I hope just, he doesn't bump into anybody, because then we'll know what'll happen. He just slurked it off. He slurked it off. 
Okay, what else are you doing? Is that the end of your stuff? It's a three three round. uh, Summon is three, and Slurk has done Slurk's first attempt. That means that it is... Oh, I should... Why don't we begin the encounter? I wonder if we'll have sound from this. I noticed that there wasn't any sound earlier, and I thought that there would be on this stuff but i'm like i said i'm having technical we had the sound effects last week and they were very loud yeah and so i i tried to balance them out but i see that they're not working right now it might be because i had to shut off the microphone for the echo oh okay josephine your turn percy after you um so i had wanted to use mabel but for some reason when i um go into my actions and I tap tap on my Mabel it says that I haven't reloaded and then when I go back into my inventory to try and reload it it won't let me reload it so I don't know are you out of are you out of ammo I'm not out of ammo no do you remember I'm the only person who actually went and stopped and bought ammo on the way out of town we're gonna say that okay I clicked the button and it reloaded Oh, okay, thanks. I'm using Mabel. On the actions panel, it reloaded. No problem. Okay. I fired. Sorry, I um, rolled an eight. You should bring your tray over to the middle when you roll in. Oh. You rolled an eight plus ten. Misses. Well, I was going to say, since nobody saw it, it didn't really happen. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. No. <laughs> wah, wah. Dang it. Okay, well. Good thing I've got my pew pews. Bing, bing. So, I'm going to see because this thing is undead, it's got a lot lower armor class. I rolled a 16 with the left. Uh, with the five bonus, that would hit. I rolled a 20 with the right. And that we're going to say hits for sure, too, because yeah. a crit, I'm going to say always hits. And then uh, that's D6s. D6s plus D4s for the fire damage. Because they are bright iron weapons. We are going to need more D4s. Get a whole schwack. I guess, eh? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's funny. You start out, when you start out as a new player playing, <laughs> I know. playing these things, it's like, ooh, look at my dice. Just like we all did. Look, I've got my awesome little dice here. And then after you play for a few levels, you're like, Shit, I need like five D twelves and I need twenty D fours. All of a sudden you're having to inquire become a dice goblin to acquire all your dice. So what's our damage? Uh snake eyes with the first roll. Oh yes. two points of damage. Oh, and then seven on the second. Okay, well nine total. That's not too terrible. Okay. And uh you um I'm going to work at balancing out damage. You guys should be doing extra damage now. And I think that the way that's going to work, I've looked at a lot of the spells and what they do is they start to add a bonus. You know how it used to be, for example, that for example, Lavinia's spell was doing um, three, three D fours plus one force damage. I've noticed some of the spells, they start to bump that up and now it's plus three damage. So I'm going to, I'm going to add that. I'm going to say that you're doing, uh, extra damage. And in this case, uh, it's four extra points of damage. Awesome. And so I'm going to say the Vinia did 13 two extra points, points on damage. hers too. I didn't add her force damage to everything and she should have had plus three force damage. Well, that's another seven points of damage that you guys did. And you need it for this big guy. Believe me. Okay. Um, that's the end of your turns. We are ready yes. for Percy, then right. the Mammoth, and then Thaddeus. Here's the twin take down. Uh, oh, I've assigned him as my designated prey. Okay. Nice. Okay, first one, no good. Second one, 20. Natural 20. Oh, plus, crit. Plus 10, so 30. And uh, it is 1d8 plus 1d4. <laughs> Last Times eight. two. What the oh. hell's going on? So eight and four. Fourteen. Yeah, so uh so twelve. Right? And oh plus two, right? Now <clears throat> I think if we look at your character sheet, I'm gonna just double check this right now. 
Thank you. See, so that was your tomahawk and your boy. Is that right? Uh, no, that's the twin takedown black arrows. Black arrows. So as far as I know, it's eight plus one D eight plus one D four. Yeah, and you get plus one extra piercing on that. Plus one extra piercing. So that's a total of four, 15. 15, and then double it. That's right, double it. 30 points damage. 30 good. points damage, my first round. Fire again. <clears throat> one. You're not going to believe it. Another 20. Whoa! You're making up for that double one that you got you <laughs> cursed as a weird tiger. Cursed me as a weird tiger, yeah. So eight and and that's three, four, five, six, seven points of damage, eight points of damage. Doubled? Doubled, so sixteen points of damage. Damn. Okay, nice. so that's so thirty forty six points of damage. Nice. <laughs> 57. Damn, that's the way to do it. Okay, good. All right, I have and, it all down there. And that, I've got one more turn, and uh, for that turn, I am, uh, I'm going to throw a rope at him. I was going to say, you need to saunter into the sunset after. Uh... Okay, you are the one that is actually standing close to closest to him, according to the adventure map. Yep. Why don't we put the game map up on the screen, if somebody wants to oh, drive, okay. put that there. And there we go, game map. This so you're the one closest. Yep. Uh, you will notice that uh, your little uh, pixie girl is laying in the dirt between you and the man. Well, I, I thought oh, you were hey. going to carry her. I was going to, but then we got attacked by this beast. Okay, maybe I maybe I changed my mind. I'm not going to throw a rope. I'm going to pick her up. Okay, I'm going to pick <laughs> her up and shield her from harm. Um, Sugar says your stash is a natural 20. Oh. <laughs> and you can and ride it. There to, goes the blush. You can ride that to victory, my friend. <laughs> right. He's so pink right now. <laughs> okay. okay. So I'm going to move to her and pick her up. All right. Now, oh, here it is. Here is our terribly scary, fearsome. Oh, it's cute. There we go. Yeah, cute looking man. My slurk is bigger. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Your slurk is bigger. My slurk is bigger oh, than geez. yours. Oh, boy. Someday on my wish list, I will be ready with my minis. I will have everything planned out. I will not be dealing with spending all day trying to figure out how come everybody's levels didn't update in Foundry and. All that other stuff. And also, actually, I'm very happy. Notice I'm I'm better. I've got my sinus uh, infection is almost gone. Yay. And I had a real busy weekend. Lots and lots of gig work. So it's nice to be busy again and uh, be doing stuff. But that means I don't have as much time to get ready for these games. Okay. The zombie is obviously... Looking as a piece, a big piece of its shoulder, the skin just slows off and falls down as you've been chopping at it. Uh, and you hear it bellow in anger. It becomes the zombie's turn, and the zombie charges forward. Now, you have picked up the little girl. You've got her in her, your arms. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move her out of the way and just hide her Boop, like that. As you do that, and I'm going to say you're there, the zombie mammoth cramps forward right up to you and takes a great big swing at you with one of its huge tusks. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, does he go through the, the sklunk? He just kind of, the slurk is just, he brushes by him on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, does he get an opportunity attack? Slurks. Mm, sure, he can have an opportunity attack. Why shouldn't he have one? Why not, eh? Yeah, give him an opportunity attack. Okay. So he gets, um, he's going to attack with his uh, tusks, which can do 1d8 plus 4 piercing if he does a hit. Roll the hit. i um, trying to find out what his, um, his, sorry, his skills. I, I, I'm having a hard time figuring out what his uh, attack bonus is. Let me move this mammoth out of the way and I'll see if it shows me on him. 
Okay, so what is it? It's his tusks? Right. Strikes plus oh, 11, dude. Plus 11, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Plus so 11 is a heck well, of a good strike, you gotta pick man. the right animal, right? I rolled a 17. Hits. With that bonus, no problem. Okay, and that's a 1d8. 1d8 plus 4 piercing. Actually, it says um, deadly, whatever that means, 1d10. It says deadly d10. I don't know what that On means. a critical hit, the weapon adds a weapon damage die of the listed size. Oh, I see. Okay. So if you had critted, you'd get the extra d10. Okay, well, he rolls a 5 plus 4 is 9 additional points. Look at that. Nice. Good get a slurk. big what extra a good bonus. Boy. You're a good slurk. Okay. Thank you, slurk. What a good slurk you are. I was saved by the slurk. The slurk stepped in and saved my life. How many points was it? Nine. Nine, yes. Nine. Okay, so that's a... Uh... You guys are doing a good job on this uh, zombie mammoth. Okay, mammoth is now taking its attack with its tusk. Its tusks have a reach of 15 feet. Fair warning. It goes to strike and it's got a massive bonus to its strike. I don't even have to roll. It hits you, guaranteed. The damage that it does is 2d12 plus 11 piercing. Wow. Ooh. Let's find out how bad this damage is. Uh, you know, I'm going to say that there's some knockback on that. Too. Kitty's not so happy about that. <laughs> That's right. You know, oh, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Oh. I can't remember which one's a D12. Meow. <laughs> we never use a D12. Is that a D12? Yeah. God, if you like the mustache, you're going to love this. <laughs> he rolls a three <laughs> plus. Yeah. A six, he does nine plus 11 points of damage. He does 20 points of damage to you. Okay. Good thing I have 69 points of damage. Knocks you 10 feet to the left. Er. As he goes, thunk. Or I guess it'd be thunk like One, this. Two. There you go. You land prone. Hmm. And you feel some type of overwhelming sensation come over you. You start to bellow at the top of your lungs does the elf and wallow does the elf move with her the with elf him? moves with him lands beside him in the dirt unconscious still we should uh, get a picture of this because mm -hmm. because as uh percy thrashes uh in the uh Meow. dirt <laughs> you see him transform into uh what he was cursed with before which is uh, a Where weird tiger. tiger. <clears throat> and out of the dirt rising where Percy was comes this incredibly terrifying weird tiger form. <laughs> and um, I... Uh, mm, 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 does the bestiary have the weird tiger in it? Oh, and don't forget, I'm also armed with these, these uh, oh, claw... Um, You're armed with the claw? I'm armed with the claw. Okay. The claw, the mighty claw. I have the mighty claw. Oh, come on. Where did I put the awesome weird Feel the claw. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just need a second one and keep him. It's okay, son. Just don't, just don't bathe yourself. That's all I ask. I was watching Larry do that up in his tree. He was like, ow, 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 ow. he doesn't. He'll sit right beside me and like have his legs straight in the air. Oh no! I don't want to know. <laughs> Gross. Groin. And I'm like, excuse me, sir. Would you mind doing that elsewhere? Eesh. Yeah, we got to figure out the math for this claw attack plus the <clears throat> bracers and. No, what's that going to give me for a, for a bonus? I'm going to say the bracers are an extra 1d6 on whatever you attack. Okay. Per wrist. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, that's big bonus then, right? Yeah. Uh, how many? It's one attack per round, and so claw, claw, bite, if I, if I do each. Uh... I haven't worked out the details for 
how <laughs> your weird tiger is going to work. It's on my to-do list. Of course, it didn't happen this week. <laughs> and some tiger face. <laughs> is that resting? Is that resting weird tiger face? on to cover it up. Yeah, I can still see okay. it. It's awesome. He's got these uh, furry white tusks, blue white tusks sticking out <laughs> on either side here. <laughs> okay, I was looking for the picture of the weird tiger from before. You know our awesome pictures of the weird tiger, mm -hmm. and I can't find them. So Aww. we're just moving on. I give up. I can't wait forever to do it. Uh, while you are rising, the zombie mammoth has taken its big attack, and it has hit you really hard. Yeah. And... Um, Oh, what the hell? Wow. Okay, never mind. Are we supposed to be seeing that? Are you supposed to be seeing that? <laughs> Probably not. It continues moving on, striding up to its speed with a shambling trample. Ooh, a shambling uh -oh. trample. So... In that case, it's that going to be Thaddeus. Are you out of the way? Or are you in the I'm, way? I'm right on its path. Thaddeus, Raven, and Lavinia all need to roll reflex. I have a thing to cast. You can't oh. cast till it's your turn. You have to okay. roll for reflex. Because it's a reflex you're because there's storm. you're going to be trampled by a mammoth. <laughs> I'm going to see how much damage he does. Okay. I got a four. My reflex. Was... You got a four? You take two points of damage. Boy, he's lucky with this shitty trampling that he's doing. Uh, I rolled a 28, plus I have nimble dodge. You jumped out of the way. Raven? 26. You jumped out of the way. Okay, so Lavinia mm. takes a glancing blow that does a whole two points of damage to her. Everybody else is able to get out of the way of this giant shambling zombie mammoth as it shambles past you and ends up right i'm going to move it to where it ends up on the screen so you understand it ends up right there and it needs to now turn around but now you get a beautiful view of a giant decayed elephant butt <clears throat> do we get a uh, opportunity attack so no nope, because you had to dodge away uh, so no opportunity attack because you had to use reflex save to escape if you had not had to do that, I would have ruled yes. Although opportunity attacks are more a D&D &D thing than a Pathfinder thing. You didn't what? I didn't move away or do anything. Did you, no, you did a reflex you just, save. You just, like, yeah. That's a dodge, right? Okay, I understand. So you, you don't have any choice about those. You have to try and do them, right? Um, that ends up being the end of the tar, tar, tar zombies uh, attack, and it becomes tar zombie mammoths attack, and becomes Thaddeus's turn. Uh, now, just to clarify, you said last game that uh, my gloves make it possible for me to hold multiple weapons in each hand. In five, the glove. Five, in the glove. Yes. In the glove. You can only throw one per hand ah, per turn. Okay. But you can hold them so that you can then automatically pick this poison dagger versus this other one that's beside it versus this other okay. one. Go-go okay. go gadget gloves? Kind of, yep. Yeah. That's what they are. Okay. Um, so in my hands, I've got the uh, the two pearl hilt filleting knives that I got from the dowry. Yes. It's a plus one to attack and a plus two to damage on both of them because of their serrated blades. Okay, well... Um, when I became level five, my skills with with weapons have increased. Yes, that's true. And so I've got um, plus fourteen. Plus fourteen for what? Uh, for those um, the pearl knives. Do you mean plus fourteen to attack? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, I'm good with that. You notice how, for some reason, Thaddeus's camera. I apologize to people at home. We're having a problem with Thaddeus's camera again, where it's doing a weird blinky thing. And uh, I don't know if there's a flaw in the camera itself or what it is, but... Uh, oh, it's probably the target. Oh, it's, maybe, it's maybe probably... Just, so sizzling, I think it, it might be that there is a loose oh, yeah. link uh, on the cable that goes to the ceiling. I think where the ceiling where it attaches to the extension, 
Rob, we're going to have to like push those in a little further up there at the top. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's the only thing I can see that it could be. <clears throat> All right. Well, anyways, we'll bear with them on that. Um, so go ahead. Plus 14 is your bonus to attack. You are not going to miss. There's no way unless you had a really bad roll. Four. Four. Plus 14 is 18. Plus 14 18. is 18. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Misses. He wow. is going to miss. Wow. And. And 17 hits. plus No 14. problem. 17 plus 14 is a crit, my friend. So you crit him on the second knife. Okay. So you miss him on the first knife, you crit him on the second. And the damage is 1d6 piercing plus 1d4 bleed. But it's actually going to be uh, 1d6 plus 1d4. I think probably plus actually 3. Let me look and see. Because your stilettos, what's the damage on your stilettos? You see, you get, oh, okay, it's a straight up. Yeah. Okay, 1d6 plus 1d4. Yep. Plus two. What plus do you get? Plus two. Uh, so that makes it six. Total of six points of damage? Yep. Doubled because it's a crit. Ah. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. So 12 points of damage. Six. What do you want to do for your second action? My second action, I'm going to have get my my <laughs> my stilettos ready in my hands for the, for my next turn. Oh, you don't have to take a turn to load them. You can oh, you know. can immediately throw them. again. I, I, oh, I know, I I know that, but um, but you can wait too if you want, just in case you're going to miss. Yep, I can I can wait. Ah, I can do a battle assessment. You can do a battle assessment. I can do a battle assessment to to figure out what. Uh, his movements and, and assess a strategy for. Um... Now your game master has to learn what the hell a battle assessment <laughs> is. Is it on your feet or where uh, is it? The battle assessment where. Or is it in action? Um, it's in class feats. Battle assessment. Sure enough. <laughs> Strengths and weaknesses. I roll a secret perception check. For you against deception buh, 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 of an enemy of your choice who is not concealed from you. Definitely not concealed. Okay, what did you roll? Do you roll two? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's you against me. Okay. You don't know what I've rolled, but I will tell you based on your stealth DC. I rolled a 16. You are successful, but you're not critically successful. No. The GM chooses one piece of information from the above list to tell you about the enemy. Let's see. Do, do, do. One of the things that you notice about this uh, elephant is that there are parts of it that are charred and it seemed to be caked with tar, this mammoth flammable tar oh you could have whispered that to him you just let us all know i figured the people at home would want to get that one too <laughs> Come anyway, you figure anybody got any flaming arrows or oh let's see i haven't got any now i gotta look at see what the effect is because there's actually it talks about this What just okay, throws off good. my entire... No, no, I'm still going to do what I was going to do because I have a plan. That's it for Thaddeus, right? Yeah. Becomes Lavinia's turn, then Raven, then Josephine. Well, the question is whether we want to do something that means none of us attack it anymore. Or not. You want to try... I mean, it, if, if you kill, to its if you kill it, it will... To bind undead. Oh, Okay. There is no reason that I can see why you could not use your shiny new Bind Undead spell. That's your last level three spell today, right? That's why I'm saying. Oh, my God. 
And if that's the one case, mindless undead creature of a level no greater than bind undead spell rank, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's still okay. With a word of power, you seize control of the target. It gains the minion trait. We now have a transport system. Well, we'll see because you know what. Just can't touch it. Like, probably do a will save concentrate divine manipulate spell effect bind undead i'm going to rule that uh it can do as raven said a will save to see if it ignores the effect okay all right it just was too tempting to not it Ooh, has got man. to beat your spell dc all right and your spell dc now is 20 shit Whoa. your spell dc is 20 now oh my god all right it gets a will bonus obviously and let's see what that will bonus is on this big old boy where's its will all right oh it's a good will bonus and that is a 20 Oh, oh no! Well, Your bind undead I, fails. I wasted my threes, but there you go. It that was, was a really wicked ass spell. That was, a good idea. That was brilliant. We would have been able to load everything onto that. That was my thought. Good. Damn. We would we would have had to lay some hide on it, but we got some frog hide and some. Yeah. I can't believe we <laughs> ran out of buffalo hide. Uh, <laughs> Rob, if you could hear yourself, how you sound is so funny. Oh well. Now that was two actions. You have one action left. Um, can I cast a magic missile on him? One magic missile? Yeah, it cost you a level spell one, level one spell. Well, she's just throwing out the chips like it's a free for all in Vegas tonight. Yeah. Okay. Roll a d4. You'll get to add um, three Don't points of damage. Down. Three points of damage to he's, it. He's, he's looking at Kato, are you being annoying? Well, Where yeah, he it? just came in yeah. and then he goes and looks at the door again. There. There's a million d4s. Oh, right. Tomorrow would be d4s. <laughs> I forgot that there was 17 in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's and make sure you leave that one on the ground because it's a nice pokey caltrop that somebody That's can right. step on and scream. We take four. 1d4 real damage. Ah! <laughs> hmm? Four. Four plus three does seven points of damage. Do -do -do. Yeah, That's not terrible at all. That's pretty damn good, I think. Okay. Oh, yeah. I want you to. Here's an empty. Um, yeah. And that was such a great idea. You end up with a hero point because that was so brilliant. Lavinia was a genius to come up with that. That way I didn't really waste my threes. Okay. And um, it becomes Raven's turn, then Josephine, then Percy. Bless you. Okay. Bless you. Raven casts spell oh, sparkly gloves he casts produce flame oh. oh where is this flame being produced it's produced in my hand and it's going to hit this um, big uh, zombie okay it's covered with what appears to be a flammable substance so he has defensive ac so um, lash out with either melee or range so i roll a plus 11. And I rolled a 6 plus 11 is 17. And I get a plus 1, you were saying, to my... Yes, you do. To my affinity. To so, your fire affinity, yep. So that would be an 18. An 18. I'm going to roll to see if you hit or miss. You have missed, my friend. Ah, oh, no. That's a 19. Okay, then I stride... I'll take my remaining motion and I'll just take a few steps back. I'll probably go like 15 feet back just so I'm not in this line of trampling for the next round. Was that just a cantrip you did? That was a cantrip. So you have one more action after those two things. Well, I did a move. Okay, it's a two action cantrip. Okay, fine. 
Okay, then it becomes Josephine's oh, turn. Well, Percy, my, you're on deck. Slurk. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I forgot the deadly, amazing slurk. The well, slurk is uh, quite a ways away now. Yeah, he's, he can go 30 feet. Um, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. I'm going to say slurk is able to slurk right up to him. Okay. Yeah. Then he'll do a tusk attack as well. Tusk attack. Tusk attack. Tusk attack. So it's a plus 11 to hit. He rolls a 12 plus 11 is 23. Hits. No so, problem. So 1d8 plus 4. Yeah. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 points of damage. And that's the end of my turn. And it becomes Josephine's turn. Percy on deck. I would like to explain, um, first of all, what a, a Joe's Zephyr vial is. Okay. For yes. people who do not understand it, because this is something that is specific to my character. Um, it is a potion, basically. After inhaling the vapor held in the Zephyr vial, Josephine moves like the wind for one minute. Until the spell ends, her movement doesn't pr provoke opportunity attacks. Once the effect ends, Josephine has advantage on one weapon attack roll on one turn. That attack deals an extra 1d8 force damage on a hit. Hit or miss, Joe's walking speed increases by 25 feet until the end of that turn. Josephine can craft and refill the vapor held within the Zephyr vial each day. So, Zephyr vial. So, you chug your little Zephyr vial? Bull whip. Bullwhip. Takes off running. Okay. <laughs> because I, I have to explain. One of my favorite scenes of any movie is when Legolas like goes up the freaking elephant, elephant in Lord of the Rings. So that's what we're doing. We're running you up gotta the run elephant. You got to run up the elephant? <laughs> okay. Roll for acrobatics. Because it's got... Because it's a zombie from. and it's covered in icky stuff that... <laughs> Infect you. I I move really quickly. What part of the zombie mammoth are you attempting to leap onto? Oh, I was just gonna like run right up him and choke him with the the whip. Oh, it's a job of the hut move. Yeah. Okay. So, which part of the zombie mammoth are you touching with your feet first? His legs, running up the back, like the back, because oh, because he's got his back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that and changes got, things. And he's got the gunk on the front. Oh, legs. Yes, the he does, but he does not have it on the back. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, go roll F acrobatics to see if you can acrobatically get up that he, big he old dead man's trunk. Ooh. <laughs> By the way, you know, you know, Percy Sugarberry said that mask. I have ideas. <laughs> I'm not taking it off now. It's going to be quite bad. I rolled an eight, and then my acrobatics is plus ten. You rolled an eight, and your acrobatics is plus ten. Let's mm -hmm. see if you can make it up to the moving elephant. Yeah, you made it onto the moving elephant. You made it onto the moving elephant. Okay, so you're up on top of this this moving and then mammoth. I'm... And you're and you're with the whip. Okay, around his throat. All right. Yes. Okay. And it sinks into the dead, rotten flesh. Mm -hmm. And is this attempt to choke him to death? Yeah. Or decapitate him. Whatever happens first. So it's not a he grapple. Is, he is, he is rotting. He's rotting. Mm -hmm. He no longer breathes. So, uh, hell, let's see what happens. If. Decapitation attempt. I'll tell you what. You can roll for this. Roll a d20. Mm -hmm. If you roll higher than 13, mm -hmm. uh, you uh, hit him in a weak spot and you do 23 points of damage to him. If you roll lower than a 13, you don't do anything. I rolled a 10. Oh! I All That's right. Like the best ever. You're holding on to him, though, right? Wait, how You're going to stay there. Well, now I've, she's standing I've, I've right behind his head. How far, with, with the, she's how far away from me I'm, are you? I'm, I'm right here. Yeah, but physically, back. how far away are you to me? 
you going zero way over there? So I don't know. It looks like about 20 feet. feet. Well, let's. I'm going to say it's 20 feet. Uh, let's do a chronic, uh, a, uh, what is it? A chron chronal shift for a reroll. A chronal shift? For a reroll. All right, okay. Attack. So Raven has cast a special spell he has called chronal shift so that uh, time <coughs> rewinds itself uh, just, uh, just uh, a few seconds. And there we go. She's going for it again. What happens the second time? I rolled a 20. And she rolled. Oh, <laughs> Holy crap. That's 46 points of damage. Your whip you. sinks into its neck because of the residual holy water that it was soaked in a long time ago. Sinks in. You can feel the, the you can see the smoke coming as it burns through, as it pulls up into the rotted flesh right to the bone uh and uh the good news is it is 46 points of damage the bad news is that whip is lodged there dang it it is not coming out both ends are this way and this way you're going to have to figure out if you can ever get it out again let's see what we can do uh, i've got to do a big subtraction uh how many points 46 mm -hmm. I might have to borrow wow. a, a a thingy. A piton? A, well, no, a, a choppy thing. An axe? <laughs> a choppy thing? You have a, a hatchet. I, I, I have a hatchet. He has a bigger choppy thing. What is it called? Oh. Uh, tomahawk. A tomahawk. Tomahawk, yeah. Don't yes. we have a battle axe? I think we do. No, no. Battle well, axe we use the battle together. axe. Mm. He took the battle axe, and when those swinging scythes were in that trap in the alligator That's temple, right, yes. he shoved the battle axe into the track to block them, and that's where they have remained to this day. Okay. Thank uh, you. Uh, can I just, I'm sorry. Thank you so much, Game Master, for letting me actually live my, my. <laughs> hero point. My, my adventure of my lifetime that I would never, ever be able to do had you not put a, a zombie mammoth in my path. And, uh. Also to Raven because he helped you rewind. Yeah, you can give it to him if you want to. Thank there you, you go. Thank you. There you go. Okay. Uh, that leaves it up to Percy. What is Percy going to do now? Percy, the Weir Tiger. Now, eventually, I will have this built so that his token and everything changes to Weir Tiger. Right now, it's just his little. Uh, oh, 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 I got too many cords in the way. Right now, it is just his. <laughs> That's too big. There it is. Okay. Right now, there we go. There's a tiger. Yeah. There's our tiger. Uh, we're going to get a, a nice weird tiger made. That's why we need to have a 3D printer up and running. Is he still prone? No. He has, st he has stood up during all of this mayhem. All right. And I'm going to run towards him. Claws right into his butt. So you just said you're going to run toward him yeah. and yeah. claws into right butt. into I his butt. Myself because I was on top of the thingy. Yeah, because I, you know, I'm going to attack his hindquarters to take out the legs. Uh, when you change into a uh, weir tiger, yeah. uh, we're going to have it work out that your character sheet changes to okay. to all of your properties and abilities as a weir tiger. So that you can look at those and decide what you want to do as a weird tiger. All right. Right now, the question is, who do you attack? Because you don't have full control of your weird tiger yet. So. Well, I just got you, knocked over by this guy with tough. That's so, right. And then, now you've come up as a weird tiger, but the weird tiger may or may not do what the Percy wants to do. So roll to see if you target correctly. And roll well. Uh, what is it? 13. Okay. Well, at least you didn't attack somebody else in your group. 13. Let's see if it works. You are successful. Because that was a shitty three. You are successful in attacking the mammoth and not somebody else in your group. Excellent. Okay. That oh, is excellent. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So are you, what are you doing? You're rolling to hit with your claws? Hit my claws and... So it's one, two with the claws? Yep. Okay. 
So the first claw misses, I think, is what the uh, translation is. No, the first claw was a 19. Oh, it claw. hits. Only a four, so. Second claw misses, first claw hits. Okay, so you said it was how much? I'm going to rule that those claws are D10s. Okay. Slashing. Plus the D6 for the leather bracer. Right. Okay. Uh, eight points of damage. Is D10 and D6? Uh, D10, D6. Eight, eight points, points of damage. damage. Okay. And this giant mammoth is starting to totter a little bit back from side to side. He's not dead by any means. Well, he's not no longer undead by any means, but he's, uh, it looks like he's been pretty badly damaged. I have to remember that I'm on his back still. So when he falls, I fall. That's true. Yes. Okay. That was just, uh, that was you leaping for one action and you attacking with both claws. Right. So I'm going to say you have one more action to do. Okay. One more action. Um, am I, I don't know, just again with one more claw, or? You could try with another claw, or you could try biting him. But I don't know if I want to bite him, he's rotten. That's true, he's rotten. Uh, 15 plus whatever. You'll get a five, and that actually will do it. I'll agree that you hit him. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a D6, and a, uh, uh, D what did I say? A D10 and a D6, D10, D6 right? D6, yeah. Oh, this is much better. Eight, nine, ten, eleven points of damage. Really? Holy shit. Yeah. Okay. And I mean it, you did forty six on your last 46, turn. So. And you did. That's oh, right. How many did you do? Forty eight or something? Mm-hmm. So um you did 46 as well, actually, I think. Yeah. Uh so the zombie spins around with all the attacks that have hit him. Uh Lashes out at whatever is in front of him, and the closest thing to him is a Slurk and a Lavinia. <gasps> so let's see which one it hits. <clears throat> Even it's Lavinia, odd it's the Slurk, because Slurks couldn't be more odd. Here we go. It's a 10. That would be an even. He swings with a tusk to try and hit <coughs> Lavinia. And his... Oh, he swings and it's a one. <laughs> God, I can't believe how lucky Lavinia is. He is protected by her deity. She, the, the ruined dress, I'm sure, has something to do with it. That's exactly it. And as it swings, it completely misses you. It, it can't really see anymore. It can only sense where living beings are. As a as a necrotic creature, it can't. It doesn't have eyes that can look at things anymore. And also, it's got something on its back with something around its throat pulling it around do and i have an keeping opportunity it unsteady. attack because of it no you do not have an opportunity attack it is thaddeus's turn and then yours go ahead thaddeus molotov cocktail molotov cocktail yeah. remembering she's still on top. Yeah, I'm still i know how to jump where on it are you do you where are you going to target with your molotov cocktail i mean it's a big target um, probably around the feet where most where most of the tar is okay you want to try and burn its feet with a molotov cocktail roll to hit it will hopefully spread upwards and there's no stats on what i need to hit i know 12 12 <clears throat> we're going to roll and see if it works that's all we're just going to roll and see if it works Molotov cocktail ends up striking one of the two front legs where the slurk had it earlier slimed it. And um, roll to see <laughs> where the slurk slime <laughs> if uh, fire spreads or if it's just straight damage of the initial blast. Five. Five. No persistent fire, but you end up burning it with a Molotov cocktail for a D12. You can roll a D12 for this. For the damage, seven points of damage. Okay, that was your first action. What do you want to do, Thaddeus? I've got another Molotov cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I've got another Molotov cocktail. He has a burning desire. <laughs> yeah. So, rolls for the 18. hits. <gasps> yeah. And at that level, uh, it's going to for sure cause um, burning damage, persistent burning damage after that. Okay, so it's, as you see the Molotov cocktail hit the uh, legs, you see them begin to flare up and burn. Roll for damage. It's a D12. Eight. Eight points of damage. And it will now have a persistent eight points of damage every turn from that flame. Ooh. Get down, Miss Smith. <laughs> Wait and for my turn, don't worry. <laughs> it becomes Lavinia's turn. And this uh, zombie mammoth looks like it's uh, not too far from death. Now, <clears throat> for proportion to how much life it had, which is immense, it still has more than a lot of the creatures you fought. <clears throat> what do you think, Lavinia? Um, looking to see could you had another spell slot down. Level one spell slot. One level one spell slot what? for magic missiles. Magic missiles. Are you just standing where you're at? Yeah. Three missiles. You get a plus three force on top of those three. So three D force. Good thing I have some D force. You can certainly Why don't you keep the, the rest of them in your black tray? Give me a couple. She's got all the D fours. I mean, they're not all supposed to live in the cup unless they're. Being hey, there's three. There's a cow drop on the floor again. Yeah, we got it. I'm not stepping on it. Yeah, no kidding. You can tell me what we've got. We've got a one and a four and a four. <laughs> a one and a four and a four. Nine plus three points of damage is 12 points of damage. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to sneeze this at. Is, this is the D4 cup. We've got another shape. 12, cup. nine. Mm, this is the home of the D4s. The home of the D4s. Okay. Okay. Uh, that was all of your uh action because you did all three uh yeah. uh missiles which means it becomes raven josephine percy okay i'm going to follow suit and i'm going to take out my um my hey, wand of magic wait, missile. Get, get it on get on a raven so we've got the wand of magic missile all right <laughs> There we go. So I'm going to get a more fierce sounding. Happy <laughs> face too. You literally look like for the Mr. for Roger. the folks well, at home. I mean, it does have pixie dust. For the folks at home, it sounded more like this. Oh, maybe my thing isn't. I do have a nicer wand. It just doesn't make any fun sounds. Hey, I don't have any sound at all anymore. What happened? This is my serious wand. Ooh, that is a serious wand. Hmm. But anyway, I um, shot him with three magic missiles. So. Is that, that what it so. was? Oh, it was from that one? That's a one of magic missiles? Yeah, it's got six charges, and I used three of them. Roll to hit, and you get to add a plus three, too. Does magic missile does not, doesn't it already automatically hit? Sorry, not roll to hit, roll for damage, I mean. It does yes. automatically hit. It does automatically hit, always. That's the big advantage. Okay, um, eight, there's ten there, plus um, magic missile. Gives me some more i got to look it up if I can find it because I do have it. I thought I had it prepared. Anyway, so it's it's whatever a magic missile is. I don't have it prepared, so I didn't look it up. It's 1d4. Yeah, I've got 10 plus whatever additional magic missile. A uh, three. I said it was going to be a bonus of three. Okay, so 13. 13. That was a level one slot. No, that wasn't. That was my wand. That it, the mammoth is barely able to stay on its feet at That's this point. Third. And it becomes Josephine's uh, turn. Yeah, the slurk. Oh, the slurk. I forgot the slurk. <laughs> what about Mr. Slurk? <laughs> well, sorry, Josephine. My handy little slurk will do um, uh, a tusk attack as well. Okay. I like slurk, so I'm gonna keep him around. Oh, uh, we! I like the slurk too. We're oh, gonna find some artwork one. for our slurk. So um, we can see Seventeen. Seventeen hits. Really? Okay. Well, not by itself, or was that with the bonus? That's a total miss. 
bad Slurk. Sorry. I thought it was just the raw Naughty rule. little Slurk. Okay, Josephine's turn. Good slurk try. is missed. Okay. Wait Seeing a second. As... He gets two. He can attack twice. Oh, my God. Okay. Fine. <laughs> slurk decides. Slurk <laughs> speaks up and says, wait Poor a Josephine. sec. I get a second try. Yeah. 11 plus 11. That hits 11 plus 11. Okay. Unless... No, he would take, no, a, take penalty. a penalty. Of, of he gets a six on the second one from what I looked at at the slurk for bonus, which gives him 17, which misses. Okay. Good job. Okay. All right. Now, Josephine, we won't take it away from you again. It's all yours. I won't get off this, like, fiery, stinky, dead, thing. stinky thing, but I want my freaking whip. So what I'm doing is I am taking one end of the whip. And I'm sliding down the front of the mammoth and yanking as hard as I can while doing it. I'm going to say that if you can beat a 13 difficulty, the whip comes loose. Ready? Yeah. Do you want to do it? You can do it oh, if no, you want. Oh, no, no, you go ahead. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Bam! Three. Woo! <laughs> okay. I'll say you beat it. And I'm still under the influence of the Zephyr vial, I believe. So I'll Yes, you like are. <laughs> out, okay. Out of there. <laughs> okay. So you went out and you retrieved your whip and it went with you. Woo-hoo. It comes Yay. it comes because of the force of your whole body, almost like a, a slingshot yanking on it. Or a whiplash, I guess would be more like Did anything it happen to its head when I removed the whip? Let's find out. Likelihood is only uh above sixteen. 16. <laughs> nope. Nothing happened to it. Okay. But I got my whip back. But you got your whip back. And it becomes Percy's turn. All right. I'm going to do two slashes again. Uh, so. You should do a big roar before you do that. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And uh, so uh, 14 on the first one. Yeah. So that's. What's my pluses on this? Uh, what, are, what are my pluses on the roar, roar, turn the parrot on and roar into it. Roar into it. I want to hear it. Let's roar into the parrot. Let's find out. Roar! Oh, that was good. That was a good roar from the parrot. Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so what was your question? Oh, uh, what are my pluses on, uh, on the to hit? Uh, roll to hit plus 11. Oh, uh, 11. So uh, that would be 20, 25 Hits. on the first one. And yeah, uh, 19 on the second one. Hits. Is that with the bonus? No. Yeah, yeah but it's a bonus of 11. It's, yeah. So uh, it's 19 including the bonus? Yeah. Hits still. Still hits? Because his arm class is 19. Okay. I can tell you that now that he's almost dead. All right. And uh, with a BDBD, there was like 10 and 2. If he was a healthy mammoth, his armor class would be 26. Wow. That's how tough their whole hides are. Nine. Seven. So 16 points of damage. 16 points of damage. And, my, and for my third move, I jump off of them and roll. So as you leap up onto its lower back to slash at it, its back legs give way. You slash into its spine. Its front legs give way. It crumples to the ground. And the weird, eerie light that was in the sockets uh, where its eyes used to be fades away and it is dead. <laughs> One dead mammoth. <laughs> Way to go, weird tiger. Yeah. Okay, so Rob, roll a d20. Okay. Um, uh, I only roll a seven. Caught up in a bloodlust, you look for your next target to attack. Oh, no. oh, shit. Okay. That target is one of the people around the table. One well, is. I, I, think, I think we should re roll that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apparently I, we're. I, I don't think I we're want turning to back attacked. time. We'll turn oh, back we've time. got a chronal shift. Okay, that's a fifteen. All right, so the bloodlust begins to fade away after your uh, 
after your attack. Oh, and that means me, right? that you are all out of combat. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> That thing's probably a little hot, hey? I was going to I was oh, ask, just, I was wondering how it smells in there. No, it's fine. Does it, it smell it, it, no, it smell it like plastic? It doesn't have any smell anymore. Or paint or anything? No, the the uh, all the smell has faded away over time mm. cuz it's been 3 weeks now, right? Or mm. 2 weeks? Yeah, more than that. Yeah. Since I did this and it's uh, all painted with acrylics, so yeah. yeah, acrylics are pretty good for not smelling bad. And they don't, they don't have a nice smell. So it's pretty good. Yes, came in very handy. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, what? Who said you could take the mask off? Well, he's out of his uh, form because he's now the bloodlust is at blood oh, the Because the bloodlust has gone away, that means he is no longer. That's right. It fades away tiger? from him. Yeah. Okay. And See, uh, he doesn't attack place. anybody else. We're all good. Okay. Later on, as he as he becomes more in control of this form he may be able to change to it at will and prolong it even out of combat but not right now because it's still fresh and new it's only been a couple of weeks at this since this happened to him it's like yep. jim carrey in the mask uh kind of yep yes. uh we are going to take a break we're going to take a 10 minute break right now folks and then we will come back uh, and find out what the finish is from all of this stuff. So I'm just going to put us back on the Be Right Back screen. Uh, we'll see you guys in a little bit. See you guys in a bit. Be Bye. right back. 